Let's take a look at dividing polynomials. The first type of dividing a polynomial is a polynomial by a monomial. Remember that a monomial is a single-termed polynomial. So let's say I want to divide 8x to the 4th, y to the 5th, minus 10x cubed, y cubed, plus 8x squared, y cubed. Remember that each term is separated by addition or subtraction. So when you're dividing a monomial by a single term, and the polynomial we're dividing it into has three terms, what you're going to do is you're just going to take each one of the terms, 8x to the 4, y to the 5th, and divide it by our single monomial term, 10x cubed, y cubed, over 4x cubed, y squared, and then plus 8x squared, y cubed, over 4x cubed, y squared. And we are going to just simplify each one of the new terms formed to get our full division. Dividing by a monomial is the easiest division of polynomials. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. x to the 4th over x cubed is x. y to the 5th over y squared is y cubed. So the division of the first term simplifies to 2xy cubed. Then let's try this next one, 10 over 4, that reduces to 5 halves. x cubed over x cubed is 1, and y cubed over y squared is just y. Okay, and then the last term here, 8 over 4 is 2. x squared over x cubed actually gives us an x in the denominator. And then y cubed over y squared is y. So our final division of the polynomial divided by the monomial is this. So let's say now we want to divide a polynomial by another polynomial. We'll take a look at a very basic example first and follow the steps of the basic example. And then we'll try some harder ones. Before I go over the steps, I just want to talk about a couple things really quick. Um, when we have a division problem here, you have some specific pieces of the problem. This right here, the x squared plus 10x plus 21, is called the dividend. The dividend is what you are dividing into. The x plus 3 is called the divisor. The divisor is what is being divided. When you divide it into, the answer of division is called the quotient. So let's go ahead and go through the steps to see how we would actually find the quotient. All right, so I'm going to arrange the terms in the dividend and the divisor into descending powers of x. If the power of x is missing, so if you go from like x squared to the constant, or maybe you skip an, you have x cubed and you skipped x squared, you need to include 0 for that power. So you would put 0x squared or whatever power it is. And you're going to write that into the divisor is going to divide into the dividend, like you would of division of regular numbers. So let's go ahead and set that up. We would then have x plus 3 is my divisor, and that is going to divide into x squared plus 10x plus 21. Okay, the next step is to divide. You're going to divide the first term in our dividend by the first term in our divisor. So really we're going to take this first term and we're going to divide it into the x squared. 
x squared over x is equal to x. So we're just going to write that on top of the x in the dividend. Okay, now that you've got the first part of the division, we move on to the next step, which is the multiply. All right, so the next step is to multiply the term we just got in the quotient by each term in the divisor. So I have x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. The 3x will go underneath the 10x. All right, so that is the next step. It's just the multiplication step. So the next step is the subtraction. We're going to subtract what we just found by changing the sign of each part in the lower expression. So on my lower expression, I have x squared and x, 3x. So since those are both positive, I'm going to make them negative. If they were negative, I would change them so that they were positive. Okay, and I'm going to now just perform each of the operations on the number. So I have x squared minus x squared is 0. 10x minus 3x is 7x. So the next step is to bring down the next term in our dividend, which would be this 21. Then what we do is we re repeat the whole process, but now this 7x plus 21 is my new dividend. So I'm going to go x. How many times does x go into 7x? Well, that would be 7x over 7, which would be 7. And then I take that 7 and I multiply each term in the divisor by it. So 7 times x is 7x. And 7 times 3 is 21. Now, that's the multiplication part. Then we repeat the process of subtraction. So I'm going to subtract by changing each part sign. 7x minus 7x is 0. 21 minus 21 is 0. I no longer have anything left in my problem. So that means that my quotient, my answer is x plus 7. Now, most of the time, it's not the divisor will not go in evenly into the dividend, so you will end up with the remainder. So let's look at step 6. So if you have a remainder left over, you write your final answer as the quotient plus the remainder, which would be given right about there, over the divisor, which is what you're originally dividing by. Okay, let's take a look at one more problem of long division of polynomials. All right, let's divide 3x to the fifth minus 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 12x minus 8 divided by x squared minus 2. All right, to start out then, let's take our divisor, x squared minus 2, and we're going to divide it into 3x to the fifth. Then we have how many x to the fourth? This is the trickiest part of the problem, is getting the 0 x to the fourth minus 3 x cubed plus 4 x squared minus 12 x minus 8. So this is a long one. So we start out the process by taking this x squared. How many times does x squared go into 3x to the fifth? If you're having trouble with that, just write a note to yourself, 3x to the fifth over x squared. 
and that ends up being 3x cubed. Then you'll take that 3x cubed and multiply each term. So x squared times 3x cubed should be 3x to the fifth. Um, 3x cubed times negative 2 is negative 6x to the third. All right. After we do the multiplication, we change each one's sign to subtract because remember, subtracting a positive means it's, it's subtracting. Subtracting a negative means you're adding, so we're changing the sign. So this is a positive, so it becomes negative. This is a negative, so we become positive. So 3x to the fifth minus 3x to the fifth is zero. I have no x to the fourths, so you don't even need to write that, but if you want to write zero, you can. Now, the next part is negative 3x cubed plus 6x cubed. That ends up being positive 3x cubed. Now, after we get all of the subtraction, we're going to bring down the next terms. I'm going to bring down 4x squared. I'm also going to bring down negative 12x. If you wanted to bring the 8 down, you could. It may or may not matter. Okay. The next term, or next thing we do after we do all the subtraction and bringing down is we repeat the process. So we're going to see how many times x squared goes into 3x cubed. That would be 3x. We're going to take that 3x and multiply. So we've got 3x times x squared is 3x cubed. The 3x times the negative 2 is negative 6x. Let's go ahead and change each one's sign and perform the operation. 3x cubed minus 3x cubed is 0. 4x squared plus nothing is just 4x squared. Negative 12x plus 6x is negative 6x. And then let's bring down the 8. Okay, you need to check and make sure that this x squared can still go into this value, the first term of your new quotient. If it can, then keep going. If it can't, then you have a remainder. So how many times does x squared go into 4x squared? That would be 4 times. Now the benefit to writing the corresponding term in your quotient over the dividend is you kind of know that it's going to be the stopping time pretty soon because you can't go beyond however many terms. All right, after we get the 4, let's go ahead and multiply the 4 by each term. So 4 times x squared would be 4x squared. These two must be the same number if you've done the process, right? 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. We're going to go through and change each thing's sign and subtract, or to subtract. 4x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 6x plus nothing is negative 6x. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So what we now have is our quotient and can x squared go into 6x? It cannot. So this right here would be our remainder. That means to write our final answer, we would have our quotient 3x cubed plus 3x plus 4. 
And then our remainder, which is a negative, so we're going to go minus 6x over our divisor, which is x squared minus 2. And here we would have our final answer to the long division.